what are we going to talk about? Uh, let's talk about your father. Uh, like, what was his name? Okay, my father was George Frederick Bentley. And uh, he was, gosh, I have the date that he was born in the 1800s. Um, and he was born in Canada, in Providence, well, not Providence, in Elmer, A-Y-L-M-E-R, in Ontario Province. And that's where my family had gone from Providence, Rhode Island, because there was land free in Ontario. They were giving land to people who would develop it because they needed more population. So my, I don't know how many great grandfathers, uh, went up and and took pro took land there. And I've seen the map of it. It was a fairly large piece of land, right next door to the land of the family whose daughter. Dad married for his first wedding, Ella Dance, and uh, what, then his family moved to, well, I guess while he was in Canada, he developed typhoid fever, typhoid fever, well, fever at any rate, mm -hmm. and it deafened him. He was very deaf most of his life, and it caused difficulties for him in many ways. And uh, he got through it very well. On the farm, he loved animals, and particularly taking care of the sick ones. And so when my family took a daughter of a family who had come west, this was in the Dakotas, South Dakota, and homesteaded there, and then died, and they left this girl so, do you remember her name? Hmm? Do you remember her name? I remember her name is Helen. Oh, Helen. Her name was Helen. I, yeah, well, my sister's but my sister's name was Ella Dance. Dance was the name of the family that she married into. Okay, so they adopt. They were quite prominent and quite wealthy. Her her, her uh, father-in-law, I guess, was political and in fairly high up uh, office in Canada. Uh, and now I'm kind of tangled on my story. I'm sorry. Uh, they your father's family adopted a girl? Yeah, they, yes, Helen was adopted. And it turned out that Helen had tuberculosis. That's probably what their parents, her parents died of. And my father, because he was the one who nursed the animals and wanted to take care of things that needed care, took care of her, and he developed tuberculosis also. And so when he, when the family moved to, or at least his father moved to uh, South Dakota, because there was just no land left in in Ontario for him. Uh, he when after he had moved there, and there were many stories about what he did there, he uh, had to move west because of his tuberculosis. But what did he do in South Dakota? In South Dakota, well, he mostly farmed. He started a dairy in their area, especially because there were a lot of them that raised dairy cows. Do you know what part of South Dakota he moved to? Yeah, I can remember. I know the name of the town, I can't remember. Because I went to Prairie View Cemetery, which is there, and found my grandfather, James Ogilvy Bentley's gravestone, which is huge and has a lot of stuff written on it. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the town. I, it's South Dakota, and I can't remember the name of the town right now. Okay, so they farmed dairy? He farmed there and was very successful and um, started a dairy for that area, which the other farmers joined in with to keep it going and make it big. And then he was told he had to go west because of his tuberculosis. 
And so he went to a place in, I'm not sure where, uh, they were opening land in South Dakota and he opened a, he talked to a, a dealer in paint about opening a paint territory in Arizona. And the guy looked at him up and down and said, you're a farmer and you're deaf. What do you think you can do? And my father said, let me try. So he went to Arizona and he was very successful or getting this paint territory open, made a big one and was very successful. Well, what kind of things did he do to get it opened and uh, ready? I really don't know. He never told me that. He just told me that he went there. And then when he had to move still further west in um, California, he went to Orange County and bought orange orchards and was running them successfully. And then they had a drought like we're having now that went on and on and on and the orchards died because there was no water reserves like we have now in dams and things to help fill out that. So the orchard died. So then he went to Crespo Manufacturing Company and became secretary treasurer of the company and helped to build Little Bridges Hall, which is one of the buildings in Claremont College. And on it, there's a plate that has his name on it. Uh, and then the family, one by one, seemed to start grocery stores. And he started a grocery store in Monrovia, which was a lovely town and small. And his grocery store was very successful until the big box markets came in, like Safeway or whatever. And um, he had already had to bow to the fact that a lot of the stores would not open on Sunday because of religious preference. And he opened his because he thought it, it was needed. Like in the Depression, he, he took extra food in the store and took it to the families he knew were hungry and made sure that they had plenty to eat. And that was just, he gave it to them because they needed it. So I'm giving you a very jumbled story. Um, give me a minute. Where am I going with that? Well, he went to Monrovia and started a store. Mm -hmm. um, and the store was very successful. Do you remember what the store was called? I think probably it was called a, a Bentley's because his brother had a grocery store in Claremont and that's what it was called, Bentley's. I'm not sure. But my Uncle Hugh, Gerard, also had a grocery store in Pomona and he got the idea of putting them all together and making a corporation and so all of them cooperated and made a corporation called Alpha Beta Corporation, Alpha Beta Grocery Stores. And that corporation became very successful and he moved into the main offices in LA and again was secretary treasurer, but it was a large voice in the company. And I'm gonna stop there for a minute because I think I'm giving you broken information that maybe needs to be tied together. Okay. I don't quite know how to do that. Okay. One of the things I could mention was that my father married Ella Dance, whose family had ordered had had a large bit of land next to the Bentley farm in Canada. And when he was down in South Dakota, his, um, he, he, married, he met Ella, or knew Ella, 
and decided to marry her and she wanted to marry him, he said he was impressed that a, a girl from such social standing would want to marry a farmer, but she did. And when he came west, she came west too. And eventually they had my sister Muriel and um, that was, I'm pretty sure at that point, I was still in South Dakota. And for that period of time, boy, you're going to have hash out of what I'm telling you. During that time, again, was when he decided to go west and then go to Monrovia and then join the, the Alpha Beta Markets. And then he met my mother, Leota Bond, Leota Ruth Bond. What happened to his first wife? Did she die? Ella died when my sister was four uh, of cancer. Okay. And um, he met my mother in L.A. And, and what, was, what was her name again? What? What was your mother's name again? Uh, Leota Ruth Bond Bentley. Okay. And... She um, she went, to, I don't know what job she was doing first, but she became a, a deputy county recorder for Los Angeles County. And her sister married one of the Gerards, which is how the Gerards and the Bonds and the Bentleys all got mixed up and were it was a good family. While my father was married to my mother, they didn't think they would have children because they were already of an older age. My mother was in her late 30s and my father was pushing 50. And all of a sudden I came along, which was not expected, on April Fool's Day, which is kind of appropriate. And by that time, my, when I was born, my sister was 20. And uh, my father bought a house in Monrovia because he wanted to have a home for my sister when she was born. And then, of course, that was the house I grew up in, which is now a historic, on the historical record of houses. Do you remember the address of the house? 210 West Orange, which became 210 West Colorado. Okay. And uh, that was a wonderful house, that old Victorian. I loved it. And it, as I say, it's now part of a historical thing. It was built by the first banker in Monrovia. Had a quartz, quartz? Granny. Post set out by the street with iron rings uh, put through it so that when people came to visit the banker, who lived there first, of course, because he built the house, uh, they, the, the visitors could tie their horses to the hitching posts while he came in and did business with my grandfather. The bank, no, not my grandfather, the banker. But my father bought that house so that when I was born, I would have a home and not an apartment, which is what they had been living in. And it was a wonderful house.